I'm Tim Landwer from Tightlines Fly Fishing Company and uh, I'll be your host today on Midwest Sportsman. Today we're going to be talking about fly fishing for pre-spawn smallmouth bass and with me uh, is Bart Landwer. He's one of the Tightlines Fly Fishing Guides. Bart, pre-spawn bass, you know, that's, we're on the river today. What is this all about? What are, what are we doing and why are we doing it? Well, I think the biggest reason that people like to come out and fish pre-spawn fish and it's growing in popularity is it's an opportunity for an angler to perhaps get some of the biggest fish of his or her year okay. uh, due to the fact that these fish have been holding in deep water all winter and mm -hmm. not eating much and now in preparation for the spawn as the water temperature warms they feel an urge to go in and fill their belly so to speak okay. so they can be ready for the for the rigorous spawn that's ahead. Okay, we're the time of the year right now I mean we're, we're the first week of May essentially here so water temperatures are pretty cold uh, but like you said, we have opportunity to catch the biggest fish. Are, are the big fish going to be our females right now? Big fish should be our females. Okay. Um, they are, are loaded with, with eggs mm -hmm. and they are, like I said, uh, essentially putting on the feed bag to get ready for the spawn. Okay. Uh, tactics, I mean, stuff's got to change. You and I both guide through the rest of the summer months and you know, we get opportunities for a lot of top water action, a lot of different stuff. This has got to be a totally different game. Well. You know, what I find when I come out with clients for pre-spawn fish is earlier in the morning when the water temp is down, the fish seem to be a little bit more lethargic and mm -hmm. we find them at, at deeper depths in the river. Okay. And as the day progresses and as things warm up a little bit, they will actually move right up into shallow water. And a lot of people don't realize that there are some very viable topwater opportunities early in the season. Right, right on. A lot of people think that just July and August is our popper time. And I know you've had clients out in the last week with, with popper fish already in the first part of May. Mm -hmm. So, but, but as a whole, I mean, water depths, this spring is a little bit different uh, where we're not ex seeing extremely high water. We're seeing kind of a lower water spring. Uh, but in high water situations, how do you approach that differently? Well, you know, I think that essentially the, the warmest part in the river in high water or in low water is going to be the shallowest portion. Okay. So as the day progresses, the fish are going to move shallow. And, and if the water is three feet higher than it is now, they're going to move three feet further up to get to that shallow water. Gotcha. So we could essentially be fishing in people's front yards today or on a normal spring day. On a normal spring, we would be fishing in people's <laughs> yards. But, but this year, the river has is, is maintained its banks. and. You know, the fish are still going shallow, it's just not as drastic as we're used to seeing and flow wise. I, su I suppose also that the water temperature, because the river is shallower, is probably a little warmer right now than what it would normally be. Right, and I would attribute the popper fish we're getting to that, that the water is warmer than it normally would be this time of year. Now, you guys stop guiding as soon as you start seeing fish on gravel, correct? Without question. Yeah, the, the spawn is very important to our fishery. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to leave those fish alone so they can get their job done. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, let's, let's get to the river. We're going to take a look at some different ways. I want, I want to see how you're using different techniques and stuff today. Let's get to the river and see if we can catch some of those fish. All right. All right. Well, we're on the river right now with Bart Land. We're from Tightlines Fly Fishing Company. Uh, Bart, you know, we're, we're in, this, in these drift boats, and you and I both guide out of these boats. But, you know, what, what's the real advantage of these boats for, for the type of fishing that we're going to be doing today? Well, I think more than anything, the, the type of rivers that we're on are, are not necessarily deep rivers conducive to running motors and deeper running boats. And these boats draw such shallow water that I can get through just about anything. One, and two, the platform is so comfortable to fish from. You know, sure. anglers have a, a casting stanchion they can lock their legs right, and they right. feel comfortable. They're at a raised uh, level where they can see into the water. It's a real visual type of fishing. It will work out great, great storage. So basically you can run these boats from pre-spawn fish all the way into the lowest river months of the season. Without question. Awesome, awesome. Uh, now we're gonna, we're gonna start doing some fishing for these pre-spawn smallmouth. And uh, I gave you my fly boxes and I'd have my picks and I know you have your picks, but what are you gonna start with? What are we well, gonna do? We're gonna start out today with a, a bait fish pattern. Um, that I came up with that's gonna... The Tim Minnow? No, that's the Bartow <laughs> Minnow. Okay. That's going to run at an intermediate depth. It doesn't have any additional weight into it. And the reason for that is if we're approaching these fish in shallow water, I don't want a cannonball landing on their heads. Gotcha. I want something I can set in softly that's gonna have a good profile and is gonna act as a crippled bait fish, something that's gonna interest that predatory strike out of these sure. fish. I, I do notice, especially in shallow water, a lot of times if we were fishing with like a, a muffet or a clouser or something with heavy lead eyes, clients are hung up on the bottom almost immediately. That makes our job a you. lot worse over the course <laughs> of the day rolling in to get flies on, and you're, you're blowing opportunities at fish. Okay. So I'd rather have something that's easier for someone to cast, throws a big silhouette, and sets down softly. But bigger flies than what we've seen. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of people use 
small flies, trout yep. size streamers, and you know, I, I I throw some meat at these fish. I'm four inches does not scare me a bit, and yep. neither does it scare them. Uh, when you tie that on, are you using a normal fisherman's knot, or what's what's your favorite? Actually, my favorite is a loop knot. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to run an open loop in front of this fly, and what that's going to do for me is by not having a fly secure to the eye, I get a lot more action out of my fly. It swings around a lot more on the retrieve. Gotcha. Interest fish a whole heck of a lot more. Gotcha, gotcha. And you fish that on pretty much all of the flies that you're gonna fish? Uh, poppers and streamers I do for sure. Some of my crayfish patterns I'll run on a tight knot, okay. but for the most part I run a lot of open loops for smallmouth. Beautiful. Well, let's go see if we can find one of these pre-spawn smallmouth. Sounds good. All right, man. I guess I'm rowing. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of typical. Bardo, what are you what are you looking for this time of the year here on the river? I know uh, what I'm looking for in the summer, but what are you looking for in the spring? More than anything, Tim, I'm looking for current breaks, spots where the fish does not have to work as hard, fight okay. a heavy current. I'm looking for big slow seams like this one up against the bank. Okay. Where the fish can get up shallow, they have deep water close by. Gotcha. But they ju you just don't want them to work at all? I don't want them to work. They're not going to be out in the faster water like they will be later in the summer. Now I'm also noticing like, you know, we, we're fishing that intermediate fly, we're fishing that Bardo minnow, mm -hmm. and you're, you're fishing it pretty quick. Is it because of the temperature increase that we've seen or uh, in the water depth? Well, I'm most concerned with, you know, the first probably four feet of my retrieve. Gotcha. I think these fish are going to be up close. So when I get it out a little ways, I might speed it up, get back into casting position, and then get right back up tight on shore. And the key to this, you would agree, is like we're covering water. We're going to right cover now. water, yep. We're looking for players right now. Gotcha. But anytime, like as this island kind of goes around this corner and stuff, the backsides and breaks. Anywhere is where you have we're a big find current fish. break right now is going to be an ideal place for a fish to be holding. Gotcha. Excellent. We'll catch one already, all right? <laughs> I gotta get to the front of the boat. This feels weird to be fishing. <laughs> Not used to be in the pointy end of the boat? Not usually. What you'll see a lot of times early in the day are fish that follow or flash a fly that mm -hmm. are just, it's just a little cold yet for them to commit to the kill. They're interested. Oh, I know what you're saying. You see kind of the brown shape behind it. The like old watching, watching, drive watching. Drive by, right? Yep, the old drive by. But as the day progresses, you know, I expect these fish to just start plowing. Yeah, it's early right now in the morning. Can you tell I'm a little bit chilly? There we there go. There he is. Nice. Did he just barely grab it? He grabbed it pretty softly. That's nice. a good fish. Too. Nice fish. Nice pre-spawn smallmouth. Now I noticed you got him. You stripped. You didn't put that fish on the reel no. at all. These fish like to come right to the boat. And if you try and mess around going to the reel with a barbless hook, you will lose them. It's a big smallie, Bardo. That's nice fish. Right here is what we've got in the Midwest in a lot of places. Yeah. Can't even fathom. Well, and you notice the other thing I'm not doing is I'm not pointing the rod right at this fish so we can just bulldog no. straight away. But you're not doing the Orvis nope. straight if up If I pose. turn my rod out, he's got to work twice as hard. Yep. And what I'm trying to do is get his head up because if he's got his head down, this fish is winning. If I can get his head up, I'm starting to you win. You got him. Yeah. Well, right now he's winning. No, no, <laughs> no, I'm taking over. Nice. That's nice. Not a bad fish, that's huh? that's a nice big river fish, man. Good way to start a day. I mean, if if you like this sort of thing. If you like big smallmouth, that's not too bad. That's why we come here, right there, man. This is one of the only places in the planet you can find river smallmouth that big on a consistent basis in all of Northeast Wisconsin. Nice okay. job, man. Thank you. Now get the heck out of the front of the boat. You want me to pull on those sticks for a while now? <laughs> no, you stay up there. I like that.